Hey everybody, Steve here. I've got a noob tip for you. This is a noob tip because uh, anybody with any amount of experience around the machine shop will already know this. But uh, a noob like myself didn't know this when I started out. And uh, now I want to just pass on this quick tip. And who knows, maybe we'll even make a series out of this. This is a little project I was working on uh, last night. And uh, I didn't bother filming it the work on it because it's it's just something I needed to get done quick and I didn't feel like going through all the trouble of editing and all that but I figured I'd just share this quick tip so uh, what this is uh, what I'm in the middle of making here is actually a couple of it's kind of overkill but I got a thick block of steel here it already had these holes in it so you can ignore those uh, and I'm gonna cut this but what this is gonna end up being is this gonna this is gonna end up being standoff uh, blocks for our new washing machine. We bought a new washing machine and the physical footprint of the washing machine is larger than the old one. It's on the second floor of the house, sits in a drain pan. Well, the drain pan is a little too small for the new washing machine. The new washing machine kind of hangs out in the front. I could tear out the whole drain pan and put a new drain pan in, uh, but to avoid the grief of doing that, I realized that all I'd have to do is build some standoff blocks uh, so what I ended up doing was I ended up using some uh, scraps of ceramic tile I made little stacks of ceramic tile and I had those underneath all four feet I leveled all four feet it's got leveling feet underneath there and everything was fine the problem is after two or three or five or seven loads due to vibration it kind of moves along those tiles and moves out of position and it can get to the point where one foot is actually kind of like on the edge of the tile and the tile tilts over, the stack tilts over, and the thing's out of level. When it's out of level, it can't automatically sense, uh, properly sense the out of balance condition and correct itself. So it never goes into high speed spin. If you put something big like a comforter in there or a blanket, it doesn't spin and you can't get a lot of the water out and then you get a whole problem when you go to dry it. So. So I came up with this idea of making some standoff blocks that allow the little adjusting leveling foot pad to sit down in a recess so that essentially it's not going to be able to want to move out. It's not going to be this little pad isn't going to sit on top of here and, and just kind of slide around. So I, I wanted to cut this recess. So the long and the short of it is, how do I cut this recess? Well obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat uh, a lot of you guys probably have different ideas on how you would go about doing this um, I thought about well I could use an end mill and I could mount this on a rotary table and I could uh, actually plow out a ring um, a ring shaped groove to make this uh, OD and then just uh, make some passes and cut out the metal in the middle could have done that but I thought about, well, how could I do it if I had it mounted this way? And that brings us to the, the point um, that I'm trying to get to here, the tip, which is the use of two flute end mills. So what I ended up doing here was I found that I had a shell mill, um, which I've got it still mounted here, which is exactly the diameter of, of the, the thing I wanted to cut, the, the recess that I wanted to cut. And I got one here so I could show you. So what we got is a shell mill here. And you can see that this basically has a uh, recess in the middle of it. So this is only going to cut. Uh, this is designed to come in, cutting from the edge, come in and, and cut across. So if I wanted to cut a slot or if I wanted to face this, this would be a, a, a good use for this. But this is not designed to do a plunge cut. The problem is that, well, obviously you're only going to be able to go a very shallow amount you're only going to be able to get a little tiny bit of depth out before that whole center area that's not cutting bottoms out so how do I take care of that well what I came up with was for an idea was on this shell mill here that area is actually quite a bit smaller in the middle there that diameter so all I did was I lined up where I want to uh, position my my recessed hole here and I put in an end mill and I plunge cut a little area out right in the middle here. 
that was larger in diameter than this area that's on the bottom of this mill. Once I did that, then I switched to this mill and plunge cut with this mill and finished my cut. Now, there's a little bit of unevenness here. I could have been really picky about it and made sure that this was all perfectly the same depth right here, but I wasn't really concerned about that because again, the foot's gonna sit and bear on this outer edge anyways. So this is gonna work perfectly fine for my, uh, my purposes. But how do you plunge cut with an end mill? Well, the only end mill you can really do that with that I know of and actually, I shouldn't have said that because now I'm just going to automatically be corrected. And somebody's going to tell me, oh, you get it. All right, so two flute end mills. I always wondered, being a noob, what good two flute end mills were. I was, you know, I was always like, oh, well, why would you want a two flute end mill? What good is a two flute? Why would you use a two flute end mill when you could use a four flute end mill? And, or you could even use a, all right, there's a six flute end mill. Got plenty of those. Why two flute? And why do I have so many extra two flute end mills on hand? Hell, I got a lot of these double-ended ones here. Twice your bang for the buck. Well, if you look carefully at the geometry of a two flute end mill, you will notice that one cutting edge goes straight across and meets exactly up with the other cutting edge across from it. So what a two flute end mill can do that, the, that say like this style four flute end mill can't do is it can do a plunge cut. So if I'm coming in from the side here, it doesn't matter. Okay, because this is gonna start cutting a groove that this is gonna go through. But if you try and plunge with one of these, you can see what happens right there. There's a little tiny area in the center there, that little hole, that's not gonna be cutting. And that little bit is going to get in its own way and you're not going to be able to plunge. So if you want to plunge and make a flat bottomed hole or if you want to cut a pocket, a pocket would be a slot that's not open on the ends, then you need a two flute end mill. That'll do you. So I put a two flute end mill in there, larger in diameter than this one. Oh, I actually got it over here. So I got this nice big honking two flute end mill, stuck that in there plunged out an area, basically ended up cutting a flat bottom hole, okay, large enough to take into account that area in the middle of that mill right there. And then I put this mill in and plunged cut and got this nice flat bottom hole, exactly what I wanted to do. So that's my new tip right there, all right? So that would be painfully obvious to uh, almost anybody out there that knows anything about anything when it comes to machining. But it wasn't to me until I stumbled upon in a book. I can't remember the name of the book, but I was actually reading a book on hobby milling and the guy was having a discussion about cutters and he talked about these two flute mills and why they were good and what they were good for. And that stuck in my head. So when I went to do this job and was thinking about how am I going to do this, I was like, oh, that's how I'll do it. So anyways, take care. Bye-bye.